why do we need a uh, Maori the festival uh, of curse movies and very alternative culture? I love it, but I want to know why are you doing this and what I'm, is the impact? I'm Leo Garcia. I'm the executive director of the uh, film Modit 2.0, and uh, Patrick Canelli is our artistic director. And, and Patrick really had this idea um, as a cinephile and as um, a filmmaker himself. Um, uh, two years ago. So I think Pat Patrick probably has the answer for that. Um, yeah, so Film of uh, 2.0 uh, was created last year. We're in our second edition of it. And um, it's a showcase of work that is, exists outside the traditional festival paradigm. Uh, we feature both narrative and, and non-narrative works that in their style or their subject matter are deliberately bold, they're extreme, confrontational, or unusual. Um, a lot of them address social political issues and taboo subject matters, um, and just challenging, you know, basically basic uh, artistic assumptions and you know, like sexual mores. We have a very heavy um, queer uh, element this year. Uh, so um, this is a festival that you know people can go to to explore to. Uh, explore stuff that really exists outside the grid, you know? And it's what's different about it than normal normal festivals and both like genre festivals is that we combine experimental works with narrative works. And we mix an animation and all of this stuff is kind of stewed together instead of being separated. So it's really about giving audiences a unique experience that they might not have intended to have. So. And I think that was always the intention behind uh, Jean Cocteau's original festival, Somadi, which he did in 1949. Um, it was just done once. And it showcased at the time those films that were really, you know, under the radar or, or just not respected in the way that, you know, today a lot of them, a lot of the films that he showed, show up on 10 best of all time lists, you know, like uh, Let's Alone which is a, a film by Jean Vigo from the 1930s, you know, things like that. So we're trying to recreate that, that vibe. And uh, that's, the, um, that's kind of what the festival is. I understand you, you're presenting 18 films and 21 shorts. Tell us a little about the selection and where do they come from? And how do, if I'm a filmmaker, what do I do to reach you? Or how does it work? So we, yes, we're presenting 18 features and we're presenting um, uh, 20 categories of short films. So we actually have about 120 short films that are playing in the festival. Um, and people can go to our website to, act, to uh, access all this stuff, which is filmmodi.org. Um, and that is, um, uh, we'll take them to the, the platform that hosts all the, the our films. Um, so, so, yeah, that's how, the, how people would find it. There's, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Patrick, I think that there's a great need in our culture to, to embrace alternative approaches because we're invaded by corporate and very mainstream uh, approach to the analysis of reality. So I think that this could be a, a road, if you want, to liberation, to to explore the uh, forbidden in a way, mm -hmm. but it's forbidden for stupid reasons because mm -hmm. puritanism or homophobia or white supremacism, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting too radical, I don't know. No, 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 I think you're right on. <clears throat> I think, you know, a film Modique 2.0 is an outgrowth or has come from highways uh, in uh, Santa Monica. What we are is in 1989, um, we were a performing arts space that uh, is dedicated to providing a platform for such voices, radical voices, particularly in 1989, we were a, a, a radical queer art space. Um, and at the time considered very bold and very provocative because the country was in the midst of a very conservative mindset at the time. So again, now here we are in 2021, it is more necessary than ever for us to provide a platform for these radical voices, for these voices with um, that, that don't get mainstream access primarily. Um, we, our, our mission at Highways is to close that chasm 
uh, um, uh, between uh, that, that place where uh, to provide access uh, with equity and inclusion and diversity through not only our original mission of performance art and visual art, but now through video, new media and film. Um, and uh, because we're an outrageous, messy, sex positive, shame free zone uh, that provides works that explore and holds um, you know, we want to hold space in this ecology of art making, of filmmaking. Uh, um, so that's that's where Film Modi 2.0 fits into uh, our mission, uh, and it leaves me feeling that our space and our mission is is in a great place right now. And there's no place else I'd rather be than with uh, uh, Patrick Canelli as our lead programmer in this uh, uh, program. Uh, we also had an associate programmer, and I focus primarily on the behold queer uh, filmmakers. Um, so it's a little bit about the, the platform that we provide in, in this time of uh, uh, radical thought that we wanna provide space for. And it's not just radical thought, it's thought that is not- uh, Toxic, like, like the one we've been receiving for four years from, you know. <laughs> yes. Right, it, no, we, we live in a very toxic environment, I hope the new administration will clean it, but I think that efforts like yours are helping to, to advance, not only advance, but defend what we have that is positive in our lives, right? Yes, then that's, that's uh, as I said, um, our original mission is to um, uh, provide access with equity, inclusion, and diversity. Um, that's primary to my goal. Patrick has other goals in terms of the, the, the festival, um, uh, aesthetic goals, uh, a vision that is particular and uh, we support that completely. So Patrick, what are your goals besides promoting films and bringing audience together and showing this different perspective of, you know, this artwork in general? Uh, it's a global festival, so we're bringing together um, people from 25 countries that we have represented. And um, it's, yeah, it's to, to open up people's minds about, you know, the different, uh, what's going on in the world. So, uh, yeah, uh, 25 countries. 25 countries, and it gives people from each of these countries, and we've had uh, this year people visiting from Indi India to, you know, Europe to, uh, you know, Mexico have been visiting this festival, and it's, really, we feel, opens up a, a bigger, broader uh, global dialogue, um, which is, I think, very um, important. And what's been great about the virtual um, uh, component of, of festivals now is that it allows more access. And we're all about that, you know, to, to um, films that normally, you know, would be play at some festival in, you know, middle America or whatever, and, and nobody would ever them, you know, whereas somebody now from India, you know, can can watch these films and, and experience the different, yeah. have a different experience. Patrick, you're the one responsible for choosing the films. I'm the main you know, programmer, what? yeah. So okay. throughout the year, you go and watch films all over the world. Now you do it from home, I guess, virtually, or how does it work? Yeah, usually it's, um, you know, I, I, you know, visit our festivals or now virtually, uh, we do have a submission process. So we get a lot of films submitted, um, but it's very, very carefully curated. Um, you know, it's hand picked. So, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. I think it's a great platform. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very happy that I found you guys. I, I didn't know about you, you. What is it that you want to accomplish with uh, modded, uh, modded Film 2.0 or Film Modded? Well, um, you know, as I was saying before, it, it's really, you know, as you see, each of these films is from a totally different um, uh, country. And also a whole, each one that with a, a totally different uh, uh, cultural uh, language of, of filmmaking and also, you know, storytelling. So it, it, again, it allows people kind of to journey around the world and, you know, in there. Um, so uh, Patrick, one thing, has the pandemic give you a more opportunity to have more people watching 
by far. Big part, by far, right? Because we're all at home and uh, really. So can you comment on the benefits of something else? You know, there's always a silver lining in life. Oh, I believe so. And, and I think this is a great development for the film festival ecosystem. I know a lot of festivals here just straight out canceled or, you know, saw this as a compromise in some way. But I really see this as a, an opportunity looking forward to the future. You know, I like that we love the idea of having a gathering in a theater and watching films on the big screen. But I think there can be both. And I think that festivals uh, should look into, you know, a way to, you know, keep this virtual energy of bringing all these different people together, but still have this theatrical experience as part of it. Uh, as um, a, a presenting organization, Highways, uh, what we want to accomplish with this festival is um, ultimately an, um, um, to provide access to all these works and uh, to develop our own online platform so that we have an app and we can present these works throughout the year continually. Um, you know, of course, the most exciting thing about these uh, festivals in the past has been able to sit in a theater and uh, uh, watch these films and, and be in that uh, environment. But uh, what's really great about this is we have thousands of people who have uh, and are currently participating in the festival, which is tenfold of our experience in live presenting. So uh, access is great. And the pandemic only provided us uh, with the um, uh, need to to show the festival and to share the films. Otherwise, it would be a live festival as it was uh, in previous years. And also in the past, you know, it was Patrick and myself alone who created this festival with two or three volunteers. Um, and uh, that's a great deal of work. And if you go to the platform filmmodit.org, Org, you will see the uh, um, extensive uh, uh, number of films that are being presented and the collaborations that we're working with and the additions to the festival, which is this Behold Queer film series. Um, so what I'd like to do is ultimately have a, a platform where people can get a subscription for $3.99 a month and watch these kinds of films all year. Throughout the year, I would love that. I will be a subscriber right away. Because, you know, I get tired, this is off record, but okay, Netflix is great, but there's so many productions for teenagers, but not for, but for teenagers that we want to wash brain or brainwash, brainwash with those stupid high school things. So yeah, Netflix, but I need more quality. I need to be challenged. So I guess your festival will challenge people too. We hope so. And we also look for collaborators, people who want to come in and support our programming and uh, uh, join us in this, this journey to create this operating system of uh, this platform for the film. So uh, be in touch with us. 